Barbero que me escucha, this is your boy Papi Double and I'm here in Houston, Texas, Illuminations Barber School. I'm here with the owner himself, Mr. Tito, the one barber, and the one and only Tank B Chopping. Now, I want to stop by and ask my fellow colleagues and barbers that I respect a lot, what do they think that barbers should leave behind in 2023? Three letter word, but it's so profound and it's called ego. Oh, why ego? Explain it. Ego stops people from growing. Either networking with people, connecting with people, learning themselves, continue to learn themselves, and continue to educate themselves. And ego can stop all that. Ego can stop so many blessings. All people are always asking, how can I get sponsored by these companies? Or how can I elevate? How can I open my barber shop? How can I open my barber school? But if you have that ego, you don't leave that stuff behind, man. You don't let go. You stop yourself from growing. I believe you have to practice humility. Uh, when you practice humility, you allow yourself to get built by others. Picking the correct people that you feel that can motivate you at that moment to elevate you to the next level that you want to grow to. So pretty much what I get from it is being humble enough to understand, hey, this person here has way more experience than me. Let me listen to the, what this person got to say so I can learn more and grow as a barber. Absolutely, bro. What do you think barbers should live in 2023? And pretty much, please don't bring them to 2024. I think, man, one big thing I see online is barbers pocket watch. Ooh. Always concerned about the barber next to them. Like, wow, you make this much money, you cut this many heads. Why are you charging this much? And it's like, why are you worried about what the next barber's doing? Yeah. You need to be worried about your pockets, your business, and how to grow your clientele. Not the next barber, because that doesn't matter. If we're in a barber shop and the guy in first chair is cutting 30 heads a day, and you're only cutting three, Whatever he's doing, obviously, is right, but you need to focus on yourself to get to that, to what he's doing. Not not asking him, how much are you making? Like, what, what, what is that going to do? It doesn't matter what the guy's making, right? Because you have to have that grind. You have to have that strive to go and get that. Talking about barbers asking, or are you talking about clients asking? Well, that's another thing. We could talk Ooh. about both. Because clients be <laughs> doing that as, hey, hey man, how, how much you charge for head? You charge $50? Mm -hmm. How many heads you cut a day? They want to sit there and do the math. How many days a week do you work? <laughs> how many weeks out of the year? Next thing you know, they're over here. Oh, man, you make this much. Why? You know why? I can't get a discount today? You can't cut my hair for free today? Uh, yeah. You know I what I'm saying? Like, time, that, like that's two things, Man. and it's, it's really similar because it's, it's just people are watching other people's pockets. Yeah. Once again, I think people need to be more focused on them to get better. I think it's, it's it's weird already to ask somebody how much you make. Oh wow, I love what you're doing. Hey, can you pull up your bank app? Let me see your numbers. That's pretty much what they're asking. Yeah. Like, bro, that's weird. You don't ask somebody that question, you know. But when it's a client that's like almost pocket watching you or asking you these questions, how do you address that situation at the moment? How do you how do you avoid the question, or how do you brush off the question, or how do you answer the question? I've had people ask me this. I like to joke in the shop. So they all, man, how much, how much, how much, how many heads you cut a day? And I'm like, bro, don't watch me, watch TV. Here, here, what do you want to watch? I give them the Roku remote, put some on, put some music on, bro. You're worried about the wrong thing. Let's get your hair cut, let's get you looking right, and get you out of here, and you can go handle your business. What about you? Has that happened to you? It does, but man, I just, I, honestly, I've told a couple of people, like, well, that's the only information my CPA needs to know about. Mm. That's it. Like, I just tell them, and they're like, all right, man, respect for that. So, yeah. With the whole pocket watching and ego, it's crazy because I feel like what I'm about to say kind of like goes hand in hand. I feel like barbers need to, I get it, we all got our value and we got to value ourselves and all that stuff, right? But I feel like, I want to ask you guys this, right? I'm going to ask you first, Tito. Uh, quick fun question. Is there any whining that you see on social media that you feel like, oh my God, can you stop? Even if you see that from me, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, because I've done it. I think, I think the biggest whining that I hear from people are enhancements and prices. Yeah. That's that's going that's blowing up a lot, bro. And I'm, I, I get tired of it. I just scroll through it, man. Cause at the end of the day, it's a service. Yeah. At the end of the day, you want to pay for the service or you don't. Whining from the barbers, crying about look at my value, or or the whining from the client. It's actually both. You'll mm. see you'll see clients. Well, I don't want to say clients. You'll just see people making memes talking about why is this barber charging so much. Yeah. You know. So you have somebody talk about it. I don't know if they're barbers or not, but it's just people just making memes or skits, whatever they want to do to talk about that. So it's that and enhancements. Like that's all I hear about yeah. people crying all day. But I've seen the same thing with people posting videos talking about why are barbers charging 60 to $100 or whatever. And they're like, only barbers I see doing that are the ones that do enhancements. I actually saw a video today and he was like, why am I gonna pay 100 bucks or 60 bucks or whatever for an enhancement that's only gonna last me a couple days? I think and I saw that one. And I was like, and I commented down, I was like, bro, people go out to the club and buy a section for a grand to two grand and that only lasts them what a couple hours 
and a headache. And a headache, and they're fine with it. They're, they're, they're balling when they can do that, right? But when you want when when you say, hey, come get a haircut, it's 75 bucks, 100 bucks, and you're gonna be looking sharp, you're gonna have enhancements, and like you said, to each his own, some barbers do enhancements, yeah. some don't. There's nothing wrong with either, but that that's gonna uphold your appearance. You're gonna look better. You can actually get some value back from that. Going out to the club, you're just spending your money and getting drunk. So right now, it's like a whining effect, because we don't want clients to whine about it, but when they whine about it, it'll make us whine about it, because we're trying to tell them, bro, stop whining about it, but we're whining about yeah, it. You yeah. get what I mean? Five seconds, three things, three simple things. It could be anything. Barbers leave it in 2023, the main in 2024. Five seconds, three things. Ego, pride, and jealousy. Three things, five seconds. Uh, comparing yourself to other barbers. Okay. Whining about the enhancements. <laughs> and then pocket watch it. Don't worry about what the next barber is doing. Don't, just get do you. Another one that I would say, the barber's license doesn't mean talent. Barber license just gives you the privilege, the right to practice the services and make money. So if we ever hear somebody talking about a license, it's not about, oh, well, he cuts better and he doesn't have a license. License got nothing to do with that. Stop promoting videos where there's a client on the chair with his pants down and the other barber is shaving his butt while the other one's cutting his hair. That right there is giving us a very bad look and I'm gonna keep saying it again. All that weird stuff, get it out of here because I know for a fact you wouldn't be doing that if a family or somebody comes in the barbershop and you're gonna be in the chair with somebody's pants down doing it. Like, that's so inappropriate. Like, who does that? I seen it, have you seen it? Yeah, I saw it, I saw it. And another thing is, and this, this is my personal favorite that I want barbers to live in 2023 is, bro, stop painting your nails, bro. <laughs> Stop painting your nails. I don't know. Yo, when I see a haircut, when I see somebody doing a haircut holding the clippers and I see painted nails black or whatever it is, I'm like, oh my God. Like, no, you got to stop that. Hey, nothing nothing against whatever. Y'all want to be whoever you want to be, whatever you want to be. I'm just saying that if you're a dog, like, you, should, you shouldn't be painting your nails, bro. That's it. I'm going to say it like that. You know, other than that, I'm not even going to ask you guys if you agree with it. I think your reaction already says <laughs> enough. <laughs> but, well, this is your boy, Papito Blessens. I'm here with Tank, and I'm here with Tito, Houston, Texas. And this is for El Barbero Que Me Escucha. Y'all have a good one. God bless y'all.